Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you my five favorite book widgets, widgets. Now, you might be wondering, what is a book widget? Well, it's an interactive activity that you can create using bookwidgets.com, and you can share it with your students in your favorite LMS. Let's go ahead and take a look inside my account here. Let's create a new widget. And the first widget that I'm going to show you how to use, there's 40 of them, by the way. The first one I'm going to show you how to use is the split worksheet. And I love the split worksheet because I can include just about any kind of content on one side of the sheet and ask my students questions on the other side of the sheet. So let's give this one a little title here. And I'm going to call this one Grand Teton National Park. And let's fill in the About section. And I'm going to edit that. And it's a little reminder for myself. This is a simple worksheet that includes Google Street View imagery. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the text that we're going to put in here. And I'm going to switch this out from a rich text pane to a web embed. And I want to embed some Google Street View imagery. And as you might have guessed already, I'm going to use Grand Teton National Park Street View imagery. I'm going to drag this down over here. And we're going to see here we are in Cascade Canyon. This is Street View imagery submitted by Michael Wolverton on June in June 2016. So thank you, Michael. And I'm going to go up here and grab the embed code for it. Let's embed the map. Let's copy that code, copy that HTML. And I'm going to select here back in book widgets. I have an iframe embed code. And I'm going to just paste that in to that field. Now, let's add some questions. And I'm going to add just a single line question for my students to answer. Now, I could add more questions than this. I could add in a bunch of different types of questions. But for the sake of keeping this demo short, I'm just going to do a single line of text question. And I'm just going to ask my students here, what do you notice? about the plants and rocks along this hiking trail. And you can see there, I could put in a correct answer, but in this case, I just want my students to respond to that little prompt. Now, let's go ahead and preview this and take a look at the student view. And we'll see here, my students will now see that street view imagery and they can move around in it if they want to. They can pan and zoom across just like they would do if they were looking at Google Maps directly. And then they can write in their answer over here and submit it. Now in a previous video, I've gone through the process of showing you how students submit their answers and how you can view those. And I have that video linked up in the description down below. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just close out my preview of this. And when I'm ready to give it to my students, let's click the share button. And it's gonna process my widget. And we can see here, I can now share it to Google Classroom, create a QR code for it, give a link to it, or with that link, I could then send it to Microsoft Teams or put it in any other LMS that I want to use. But since I'm in the habit of using Google Classroom, I'll just click on Send to Google Classroom and put it right there. And again, 
to see the student perspective of that, click the link for the video. It's in the description down below. Now, the next widget I'm going to show you is similar to the split worksheet. It's called the split whiteboard, and it's great for those of you who teach math or teach any topic in which it'd be really helpful for your students to have a freehand place to sketch and submit responses. We'll take a look at that one next. So now I'm going to create a new widget. And as I just mentioned, we're going to create a new split whiteboard widget. Let's select that option. And again, we'll go up here and I'm just going to call my widget here math prompts. And again, if I go into the about, I can put in a little description for myself. This is a widget for demonstrating how the split whiteboard works. Now let's go into our general here and I can put in instructions for my students. And I'll say, do your best, use the whiteboard to draw slash diagram your answers. And now here in my text, I'm gonna go into my rich text option. And let's say to my students, please solve the following equation. Now, let's just go ahead and preview this. And it's important to note that you can preview these at any time in the editing and creation process. And I'll click OK. And my student will see, please solve the following equation. I haven't written in the equation yet. But I'll show you that over here on the right-hand side, they can then sketch to their heart's content. You can write with a mouse or if they're using a touchscreen device, they could obviously just touch on the screen. And I'm going to close out of that student preview right there. And now let's go on and take a look at another widget that I really like, and that is the hot spot widget. We'll take a look at that one next. So the hot spot widget is one that you'll find down here under pictures and videos. And we're gonna hotspot an image. And what this will allow me to do is select a background image. First, I wanna rename this one. I'm gonna call it Iceland Air Route Map. And I'm going to upload an image that I have on my computer. And there it is. And now I want to add a hotspot to it. And so what I'm going to do here is a video pop-up hotspot. And I'm going to grab the link to a YouTube video that I want to go with it. I'm not going to do a video upload. I'm going to do a YouTube video. Put in that link. And I'm going to use the standard video width and video height, which is 560 and 340. Oh, do that the other way around. Sorry. And I'm going to have my hotspot labeled. And I'm going to call it airplane takeoff. Now, on the map itself, I'm going to put it right there for the Isofjordor Airport. Hopefully I said that correctly. I've been there, still not sure if I'm saying it correctly. 
And so I have my hotspot now on the image that I took of the map. And I took that picture in the airport there. And let's go ahead and preview that. And there's a student view and the student can click on it and they'll see the video load right there. Now, obviously my aspect ratio is a little bit off. So let's close that out. And let's switch that around. I did have it right the first time, 560 by 340. Now let's preview it. And we should see, there it is, in the correct aspect ratio. And I could add another hotspot. I could add a hotspot for every single item or every single airport on that map. But again, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to keep it short and just do that one hotspot. And again, you can share it by hitting the share button in the upper right hand corner and it'll process your widget so that you can send it to Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, create a QR code for it, or share it wherever you would normally share a link. And now the next book widgets widget that we're going to look at is the timeline widget. And as someone who's taught history for years, the timeline is one of my favorites. So to create the timeline, we're just going to go back into widget type and select timeline. And I'm going to call this one American Revolution. And the title will just be American Revolution. And I'm going to make this an editable timeline for students to complete. You can see I can also leave it as a fixed timeline, which would then just make it a reference material for my students. I want this to be something that they edit. And I'm going to put in my instructions here and say, please complete this timeline by adding dates and details to the events. Put the events in the correct sequence. Now, let's go into events and I'm going to add an event. Now, I'm just going to put in the name of the event here. I'm not going to put in the date. So I'm going to start with the Battles of Lexington and Concord. And I want my students to fill in the description. So I'm going to leave that blank. And I can add an image, but again, I'd like my students to do that. So I'm going to leave that blank as well. Let's add another event. And let's say oh, Saratoga. Add another event. And let's add one more. Now, I've added four events. We can go into our reporting and you can see there, I'm going to enable submitting of answers by students. And I can go into the design and I can add a cover image if I like. And I can also change the orientation from horizontal to vertical, but I'm gonna leave it as horizontal. I like that format for my timelines. And now let's go ahead and preview it and look at it the way a student would. The student's going to see the instructions here. Please complete the timeline by adding dates and details to the events, put them in the correct order. And we'll see here, I already have them in the correct order. So what I'm going to do to make it a little trickier for my students is go to the events here and let's move these events around. And so I've shifted them around and now let's preview it. And we'll see here, I should have saved that before <laughs> I shifted those around. But once I do, then my students will have to put them 
in the correct order. So let's go back here to my general tab. We'll see it's editable. We have our instructions here and I'm not going to allow my students to share it. Now let's share it out. And again, my students will have that link that I'll share with them via Google Classroom. You could also do it in Microsoft Teams or whatever your favorite learning management system is. And the last widget that I wanna share with you, and again, there are 40 different widgets available in book widgets, but the last one that I wanna share with you is the mind map widget. We'll take a look at that one right now. So again, I've clicked the new widget tab and I'm going to select mind map. And let's create a mind map. And I want my students to create a little mind map regarding the five themes of geography. Or I'm just gonna leave it as themes of geography. Let them figure out how many themes to identify. And we'll see the titles automatically filled in because I added it right there. And let's give the students a little head start here by putting in some text for one initial node. And you can see here, I can do them as rounded, rectangles, I'm gonna leave it as rounded. I can change the fill color to yellow and border color to black or white or green. I can make some really odd color combinations for my students. And let's put in here And now let's go ahead and preview that. And we see there's the first node on the mind map. And I want my students to add to this. So to add to it, they can click on it here or they can click up here and create a separate node all together. And they can change out their color scheme and they can start writing up there as a completely new node for their mind map. And we can go to our general settings here and we can write in some instructions. And I'll say, please connect as many nodes as possible. And now let's share it out one more time you can share this in your favorite learning management system or share it by a QR code. I should also point out there is an option for students to sign into book widgets and you can view all the responses right there where they can also work on the things that you share with them. And again, the video that I previously published about book widgets has those directions in it. You'll see that in the description down below. So those are five widgets within book widgets that I really like. As always, for more things like this, please visit freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.